Hello again, it's Cliff from Down Under. I'm going to do a little bit of uh, fourth axis uh, rotary engraving, wrapped text around an aluminium part. Should be interesting. The old brain's a bit full of a virus cold today and it's not on par. So this could be quite entertaining. Okay, let's start with the CAD CAM phase. Um, some of you will have 4th axis CAD CAM um, and continuous 4th axis CAD CAM and that would be brilliant. Uh, I don't have that and I know a lot of you won't have that. You'll just have, um, like me, ordinary 3 axis CAD CAM or, or CAM. Um, I've got Bob CAD CAM. I'll just go through this quickly because um, it's really another subject. But uh, Okay, so if you produce your text first of all. Um, in an ordinary mode, just, just however your software um, directs you to do that. So enter your text, uh, you want to vectorize the text, that means you want a lot of short line segments rather than radii, because radii um, on a fourth axis situation is difficult. So we're going to go straight line, vectorize. Um, produce the text just in an ordinary orientation that your software produces it in. You really want single line font so um, if you want to do quick engraving so you, otherwise if you've got double line font um, your cutter is going to be taking two passes um, and you can have more problem with the the letters and numbers running in together. Um, so as a starting point look for single line font unless you specifically want um, a complex type of text. So you produce your uh, text in the ordinary uh, layout. Now, now you need to rotate it into the orientation suitable for wrapping into the fourth axis. So how do you know what that orientation is? How do you know how to rotate it? Well the short answer to that is um, there's no short answer. It depends on where your fourth axis is. Is it on the left? Is it on the right? Is the part um, going to be engraved faced from the bottom or held from the top and so on. So I think the best answer to that is um, work out what you think would be appropriate. Um, rotate the text around until you've got it how you think it should be. In this case you can see the text here for Hallmark ITTP is um, orientated this way, H-A-L-L going down um, and, and orientated that way from left to right. Um, and so Produce your text, produce your code, and the best way you think it should be orientated, and then convert it um, to uh, wrapped fourth axis, which I'll go through in a minute, and just test it um, with a piece of wood or plastic, and then if you're out, make a note as to which way you're out and how to rectify it. So produce your code, um, your XY code, save that file, um, and then you can go on to open it up with your fourth axis axis wrapping software. Okay, I'll just do a quick simulation. Um, we're just checking that the toolpath is basically correct. You haven't got any bad gouges in it. Um, I think I've got it on 150 millimeters a minute feed rate, um, 0.4 of a millimeter deep, single pass, just a simple quick engraving job. And you're just checking here that your toolpath is okay. Okay, so we've got the XY code, now we're going to convert it to XA code. As I've said before, software is not my strong point, um, so I won't use up too much of your time on this. Um, basically, you download CNC wrapper version V3.8, and you get 10 sessions um, before you have to register. Uh, select the uh, conversion type, y-axis to a-axis, um, set your diameter, um, open your file, so here we are over here on the right, we're going to select this XY code, open it, we get the strange warning, X is not a valid floating point value, I don't know what that is, I've just ignored that. Um, so now we've got XY code here, um, start the code conversion, again we get that warning, um, and then we save the file. If you look at the code now you can see it's all 
uh, it has, yes, it's all X A code now. Okay, so now we're going to save the file. Um, we can select the type of file we want, NC code. There it is there, but it's now got wrapped NC on it. Save that. So as simple as that. Um, hopefully that's all there is to it. Okay, now we're setting it up in the fourth axis. I've got the part in a small three-jaw chuck. Um, I'm a fan of having a, quite a small chuck because you get more clearance around the jaws so the cutter um, holder is not getting too close to the jaws compared with a large chuck. Um, check the, obviously check that your part is running reasonably true, at least in the area where you're going to be cutting your um, doing the engraving. So you're checking that it's reasonably true. Set it in the rotary position that you want to be. Which thinks about there. So if you've uh, produced your um, toolpath um, graphics uh, based around a Y uh, line zero through the middle, uh, then you that is now the A rotational direction. So you want to rotate it to the position where you want your graphics um, lettering to start in the middle. And then um, zero your ADRO at that point. To find the middle of the part to set your cutter, you can, if you have a height gauge or something like that, you can just rest it on the top and rub it backwards and forwards. That burnishes a darker line, like a pencil line on the top surface. Um, you can set your cutter on that and that will get it within a few thou of um, Y position. It won't move it from there that's uh, fixed in that position and it only needs to be approximate for engraving work. So that's a quick way to set your Y position. Okay so we've set our rotary or A position um, in the center of the graphics and zeroed the A axis DRO. We've set our Y position from that line with the height gauge and zeroed our Y axis we come down with the Z axis until it's just biting on a piece of paper um, or releasing on the way up and that's conveniently most paper is 0.1 of a millimeter thick or 4 thou so into that into the ZDRO and then um, on the X position we know where the uh, engraving starts we know where the, the line is, we've noted that from it on our CAD and so we set that probably just by ruler, in this case about 15 millimeters up from the base. Um, okay, ready to roll. Maximum velocity sliders set right down.
We probably can't see much there, so I won't use up your time during this. It looks like it's going to run for about two minutes, so I'll just cut off now. And there we are, machining completed. Hallmark Impact Tolerant Touch Probe. So I guess I'll put some colour or black epoxy in there to highlight the lettering um, and fettle it up a bit. Good fun. So here's the cutter, a D-bit cutter. I just ground it on my D-bit grinder. I've got other videos on engraving that goes into this in more depth. So this is just really brief. It's about a 0.8 diameter at the small end and about a 15 degrees a side ground on it. Um, so over this part of my workshop, oh, sorry I'm zooming in the wrong direction. There's a little D-bit grinder and um, you just tip it around at the angle and rotate it and so on. I've, I've explained that in another video but you, you want to consider one of these little grinders uh, if you're doing quite a bit of engraving because you can um, sharpen your tools and have any type of cutter you like and uh, now that they're made in China they're quite reasonably priced and there we are a bit of black enamel inside the engraving and um, um, carborundum paper to polish off the surface a bit of a fettle up it doesn't need to be perfect because it's only a prototype in the production probes um, I think the uh, the nose piece will be hard anodized black um, and I'll use some sort of color in, in the engraving.